from a planting perspective, you can see that we've double staked everything and put 1.2 meter tubes on in a vain attempt <laughs> to try and stop the sheep from knocking them over. Um, it's sort of working to a certain extent. Most of them are okay. We need to do a little bit of TLC on them. Um, but as long as it's a small amount, then that's then that's good. What we what we what we're finding at the moment is that you know it's it's um, it, it, with two stakes, you're not losing too many, uh, and you're not getting knocked over a, a vast amount. Uh, one of the things that we decided to do on this is because it's still technically permanent pasture, is to not spray around the base of each of the trees, which is normal forestry practice to get the trees away. We understand that that's going to have a a negative repercussion on the growth side of things um, but we're willing to take that. There is also the possibility um, that you've got more fertiliser going on in the land because you've got the sheep grazing that you may find that there are benefits that come from sheep grazing on the land that, that, that we don't know about and so all of this is whilst some of it will be anecdotal some of it hopefully will come from the research that's being done by, by Alison Trust. Uh, species wise across the site it is all native species we've integrated a few different sorts of species namely um, gelderose and wild privet and crab apple at, at perhaps higher levels than we would do normally um, because they are very good from a, 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 a pheasant point of view and we want to in integrate the game management into that. We've also looked very much at, um, at, at um, climate change and where that's going so we've integrated other species in here such as sweet chestnut and walnut that was as, as higher main canopy trees that we wouldn't perhaps put us into native woodland that was termed native woodland by the Woodland Trust where a little bit um, we, 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 we have a fairly, fairly close amount of trees that we require or we, we deem as being native so we've opened that out a little bit here. Um, there are five main areas of shrubs one of which is in front of us one of the things that we want to do here from the pheasant point of view is allow some cover to, to be generated. First few years when we haven't got any shrubs poking out we didn't really see too much of an issue with still grazing this and maintaining that as pasture and in the basic farm payment uh, booklet and, uh, and form. This is all gone down as pasture. This is all being grazed and therefore is all still eligible from our point of view. Um, but these plots, these five areas of shrubs will in in time maybe not next year maybe the year afterwards will then the sheep will be excluded from them and these areas will regenerate a lot more flora and ground growth which in turn will be better from the pheasant point of view they're predominantly planted with shrubs although there are trees planted within those you will see a few sort of 1.2 meter tubes on the way through um, but then the, the majority um, of uh, trees are planted outside of these areas so we haven't got any shrubs in the 1.2 meter tubes because of course we're grazing that so it would be detrimental and the shrubs would be would be chewed off. You may have already said it sorry but how many years grazing would you get under them trees before there's a canopy that spoils it? Well this is one of the interesting things that we're looking at actually because the densities range from 100 trees per hectare you can see in that far corner oh, which, is about, pain, yeah. which is about 10 meters by 10 meters yeah and then you've got in front of you 1600 trees per hectare which is two and a half meters by two and a half meters yeah. <laughs> one of the big things is looking at where that density goes and what flora and ground growth and grass growth you mm -hmm. lose or gain beneath the canopy and at what density that the viability is lost so we're looking at live weight gain it's, it's, it's quite tricky to do live weight gain on a specific density because of course we've got we've got it across the whole site and we've got 14 different plots across here seven different densities, 14 different plots, all scattered so that we can try and get a, a good mix. I'd be instantly interested in how quick I could get pigs in there as well. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> you know, it's really what, interesting how many years you have to go down the line. Before. Actually one of the things that we have been asked a lot of the time is, you know, I've, I've spoken about this a lot in the last year and a half, even before it got planted I was telling people how wonderful it was, but I'll just ramble on and tell people that all the time. But one of the things that we immediately got asked and I immediately got asked when talking to farming groups was, well, how do you do that with cattle? How do you do that with pigs? You can, you've just got to spend more time considering how you're going to fence it off. So I've got two or three farms who are doing it with dairy, uh, dairy cows up in Shropshire and they've done it in lines and they've electric fenced the lines off, which is more alley cropping than this, but agroforestry, is yeah, it, it alley cropping? For the first is it this? Seven or eight years, mm. ten years, and mm. then once you've got once you've got a good established root base, there's nothing to stop you putting pigs in. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you were putting quick-growing species in, 
there's nothing to stop you doing it in seven, eight, nine, ten years. If the growth rate was right and if they were planted right and if you're in the right conditions and pruning and maintaining it right, mm. then you'll get the growth. But you, you don't want to clearly, you don't want to put pigs in until they're no, very well established. Enough to stand up to the, them, yeah. the, the dairy cow side of things is very much in from a browsing point of view. So their, mm. their end game is to browse a whole variety of trees, including things like willow. Uh, with a view to them self-medicating and, and cows self-medicating in the sick paddocks where we'll be planting. But also, quite a lot of evidence shows that um, cows and, and, and cattle, when they browse, will browse specific um, trees and shrubs to, to, um, to give them the nutrients and minerals that they're lacking throughout the rest of their diet. Mm. 